Good morning. Now I'll be discussing about enteral nutrition. Enteral nutrition is very important for our patient because our patient uh, in this situation, they have difficulty swallowing, they have difficulty chewing. That's why uh, the doctor ordered for enteral nutrition. What are those uh, types of enteral nutrition we are using? in the hospital. So, uno una ang NGT, okay, or nasogastric tube. Nasogastric tube is inserted through the nose, down the throat, and into the stomach. That's why it's nasogastric. Naso means uh, nose, and then gastric means stomach. So, it's from the nose, until to your stomach okay so this is the picture on how they are feeding the patient through ngt next one is nasointestinal tube nasointestinal tube is inserted same through the nose but it's deeper so it will be until small intestine uh, bakit naman hanggang naging intestine siya? It's because maybe your patient have difficulty uh, absorbing the nutrients because maybe may problem siya sa stomach niya. Meron siyang cancer sa stomach. Kaya hindi kaya mag-absorb or may digest ng patient using the uh, stomach. That's why mas nilalaliman pa ng mga doktor at nilalagay nila sa intestines or small intestines. Small intestines also is responsible for food absorption and there is digestion taking place also in the small intestines. So the first two, nasogastric and nasointestinal, ano ang risk pag ang patient mo mayroong nasogastric at nasointestinal? Ang risk ay pwede silang magkaroon ng tinatawag nating aspiration. That's why if you're giving food or giving feeding to this kind of patient na mayroong nasogastric at saka nasointestinal, okay? Very careful tayo at lagi nating ipoposition ang patient into Fowler's position because this one they have risk for aspiration. Unlike the third one, fourth one, and the fifth one, okay, very lesser lang yung risk sa aspiration. So, ano yung pangatlo? Ito yung gastrostomy tube. Gastrostomy tube, as the name implies, gastrostomy. Gastro means stomach and osto means opening. Okay? Opening. So, they inserted a tube into the stomach and then they created an incision, okay, to create a tube feeding, okay. So this is the how it looks like the gastrostomy. Next is jejunostomy tube. Jejunostomy tube is inserted into the jejunum. Jejunum, okay, as we all know that jejunum is a part of your small intestine where in incision is inserted or created to make a tube feeding okay so this is jejunostomy if you created it into the stomach it will be called as gastrostomy tube okay lastly we have the percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube or we are calling it in short, as PEG. PEG is the most expensive enteral nutrition that any patient can have because the operation cost is very expensive. And it's costly also because we are using an endoscopy, okay, a video-assisted operation. That's why it is the most expensive enteral nutrition that the doctor is ordering for a patient. But this is, even if it's expensive, it will be the safest one because 
there is a less risk for aspiration. Why? Because the food is directly going into your stomach itself. Okay? Not going to the uh, throat and then going to stomach. But direct na siyang pumupunta sa chan natin. Okay? That's why it's very safe. So we have different ways in giving enteral nutrition. We have two ways. We can give it as intermittent or bolus, and we can give it as continuous. Okay, continuous. When we are uh, talking about intermittent, intermittent or bolus, these are tube feedings that are given at certain times. So, for example, we have. Usually, this is, these are the scheduled feedings. We have 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 p.m., 8 p.m., 12 a.m., and 4 a.m. Usually, it's every four hours. Okay, So, be, uh, before giving feeding, you need to check if, you're, if your patient have nasointestinal and nasogastric. Uh, you need to check every time the patency of the tube and the placement of the tube if it's correct. While continuous, these feedings are usually given over 24 hours using feeding pump. Okay, So this one, you just regulate it using a machine. For example, 50, 50, 50 ml water and then 20 uh, 50 ml feeding and then 20 ml water. So using a machine or kangaroo pump or feeding pump, you can regulate it. So this is how it looks like. Your left side will be an example of bolus feeding or intermittent feeding. So every four hours, they are giving food to your patient. And then into your right, this is enteral uh, feeding through, which is continuous. Okay, Using a machine, they are feeding the patient. They are just... Uh, regulating it, they are just uh, setting uh, the feeding feeding amount and then the water. Okay. So this is what we are preventing to happen. Aspiration. Aspiration is drawing of air or other substances to the lungs. Okay. Is its drawing of air or other substances to the lungs. So the first two in nasogastric and nasointestinal is the uh, enteral nutrition, which is the higher risk for aspiration. So how we will prevent aspiration? So we are not giving harm to our patient. We are preventing this harm to happen. So what are those ways that we can prevent aspiration to our patient? First, we need to position the person in fowlers or semi-fowlers position before the feeding. Okay, as I've told you, we need to give them or to place the patient into fowlers position. So the food will not go to your lungs, but it will go to your stomach. Next, maintain it for one to two hours. Don't let it, uh, the patient after giving food and then make the patient flat on bed. Okay, allow or keep the patient one to two hours in the same position, same Fowler's position. So the food will uh, go or move through the GI tract. Next, avoid say left side lying position, of course. No, say it's left side lying position. Maybe your patient may, may vomit, might vomit. Then turn on the light if the room is dark. So do you so even if the person is sleeping? Then check and inspect the feeding tube and label with a nurse. Always check the feeding tube. Maybe your patient uh, have many tubes and we don't know what is the tube feeding. So you should always check anong feeding ba ang para sa uh, anong tube ba ang para sa feeding. Make sure an RN checks for tube placement. Make sure an RN checks for tube placement. Okay, tube placement 
actually the registered nurse only have uh, has the responsibility to check this unless you have training to do so okay how we will check the patency or the tube placement so first you need to put a stethoscope okay and then your stethoscope you'll put it into the just below the sipoid process or the chest or the chest bone okay and then that is your stomach area then you put the bell under the sto uh, the stomach area and then you get a, a septo syringe put uh, put an air into the tube and then if you hear a bubbling sound or we are calling it as borborygmi borborygmi sound okay it means that the placement is correct We have bore, bore, rig, me. Sound. Okay, we can hear the bore, borig, me sound. So Yun yung sound na makikita na maririnig natin once na once na nag-assess tayo ng feeding and I'll, I will teach you about this when we resume our class. <clears throat> Next is make sure every tube catheter and needle is labeled dapat lahat merong mga nakalagay na name, date, okay? Kasi nag expire din yung mga tube, cat, tube uh, feeding and catheters na yan. So, we should always put uh, uh, expired uh, label so we will know if it's expired or no. Then, trace the feeding tube back to the insertion site. Start at the end, okay? Sabi ko nga kanina, dapat i-trace natin kung tama ba yung tube na hinahawakan natin. Kasi pag ang patient nyo maraming tube, tubings, eh, minsan nakakalito. So hindi natin alam ano ba yung lalagyan natin ng feeding. Ma maybe ibang, ibang tube pala yung nahawakan natin. So dapat i-trace natin from dun sa tip hanggang dun sa end. Kung tama ba, kung sa ilong ba siya nag end So it means nasogastric siya. Or sa chan ba siya nag end So, it means may be peg siya or gastrostomy. Notify the nurse if signs and symptoms of problems with enteral feeding devices includes nagsusoka ba siya, nagbubloat, may pain ba siya during feeding, umuubo ba siya or naggagag or nagbabamit. It means na hindi tama or hindi sa, sa, sa stomach uh, napupuntang food. Okay, it means na, na nagkakaroon ng aspiration ng patient kaya siya umubo. So, dapat alam natin yung mga ganitong signs and symptoms. So, we should report to the RN. Then, abdominal distension, a swollen abdomen, it means na hindi na to tolerate ng patient ang feeding. Kaya, uh, minsan pinapahinga muna kung hindi na to tolerate ng patient kung every four hours ang feeding mo then hindi niya na to tolerate so in npo muna si patient kasi once na nag abdominal distension siya ibig sabihin naglumaki yung chan niya kailang ipahinga muna kasi hindi niya na tolerate yung food nagkaroon ba siya ng diarrhea ibig sabihin hindi niya rin na tolerate kasi nilalabas agad ng chan niya yung mga uh, kinain niya then drainage around the tube insertion sites. So, kung ibig sabihin bumabalik or nagbabackflow yung kinain niya. So, tama ba yung placement natin? Or masyado ng, excuse me, masyado ng matagal yung yung tube natin. Kaya nagbabackflow na siya or hindi tama yung position natin sa patient. Then, disconnected tubings. Maybe na, nahila ng patient yung tubing. Kasi agitated siya or restless. So, we should always 
uh, check it. Okay, so the demo will be I will uh, I will do dance on during the resumption of our class. Next is uh, the last enteral feeding that we are using in the hospital is the total parenteral nutrition or the TPN. We are also calling the TPN as hyperalimentation. Uh, hyperalimentation or TPN is, differs from enteral nutrition because the nutrient is being delivered through a large bore catheter. Okay? Kumagawa sila ng isang uh, butas sa veins, okay, it can be a central line or you can put it as peripheral line, okay, mag insert sila ng suero, medyo malaking catheter yung gagamitin nila, IV catheter, kasi nga, malaki yung contents ng TPN. Usually, parang, uh, parang gatas yung TPN na pinapadaan sa suero. Okay, so yung mga anorexic, uh, yung mga sobrang payat, yan, binibigyan sila ng TPN. Yung hindi makakain, hindi makanguya, then ayaw magpalagay ng tubo, pwede insertan lang sila ng suero and then they can give TPN. So, ayan yung TPN. Okay. Pwede ilagay sa central line. Ayan, mag insert sila ng uh, uh, central line sa malaking ugat sa ar main arteries ng katawan para diretso agad sa ma Diretso agad yung nutrition niya. So, ayan a ah, TPN. And meeting 